Hola chicos! If you're coming to Valencia soon, we've put together a list of tips to make your stay more enjoyable. It's a huge list, so we're gonna try to power through them and get through this very quickly. Vale, vamos! Getting a cab here is surprisingly cheap. You can either download the apps or you can hail the cabs from stations like these. These are lanes that are exclusive for EMT, which is the public bus transportation, or the taxi cabs. Actually, just in case you're not bringing a lot of things, maybe the metro would work. Plus, it's cheaper. Of course, the cheapest is to take the bus. If you don't flag the bus down, it's not going to stop for you. Valencia is a walking city and it also has a great public transportation system. So if you're staying in Valencia, especially if you're staying in Valencia for the first time, it would be better to be around the center of the city, which is this one, close to the Intamento, because you're going to be closer to the train station, you're going to be closer to the old town, you're going to be closer to the new town, and you're going to be close to the cool town. You also need to know that 112 is the number to dial for any emergency. When you dial 112 and you reach the operator, the operator is going to divert you to whatever emergency service you need. Also, this green cross here, it's not what you think it is. It's a, it's a pharmacy, so you need to know that. If you're visiting Valencia just for a couple of days and you're not bringing a car with you or you're not renting, there's this thing called the Valencia Tourist Card. And what it is, is you pay in increments of 24 hours, 48 hours, or 72 hours, and you get to ride the bus, the train, and the metro, the suburban ones, unlimited. You get unlimited rides. Not only that, you also get free entrances to the museums. If you're staying for more than three days here in Valencia, I think it's better to get the Mobilis card with a 10 trip ticket. So you can also buy those here at the tobacco shop. Time is officially given here using the 24 hour format. But when they talk about time, they use the 12 hour format. You should also know that the date is a different format as well. The day precedes the month and then the year. So don't forget because you might get confused. Valencia is also a biking city. So there are bike lanes everywhere. So when you're biking and for example, you don't see a bike lane anymore, that means you need to bike on the street. Rule number one is you can't bike where there are people. So when there are people like you're biking on a sidewalk, you need to hop off your bike and walk with the people so you drag your bike with you don't break that rule that's really important or you'll get fined also there are bike rental programs everywhere stores and even the city has a bike rental program called balen bc and it's an amazing program you just download the app and then you just pay on the go when you're driving and that light turns yellow that means you need to stop it's not a mellow it's not a slow down because people here they're gonna wanna cross the street as quick as they can and have to be cautious. Master some important key phrases or words in Spanish that can help you throughout the day. In Spain, when we enter a store or if we go hop on the bus, we always say buenas for buenos dias or buenas tardes or buenas noches. So sometimes they shorten it to just buenas as your local greeting. And then when you're leaving the store, usually people say hasta luego, that says goodbye or see you later. Then if you're looking for something and you're not sure if the store has it, you can ask them if they have it. Uh, for example, tienes zapatos, like do you have shoes? And then cuánto cuesta is a word that we use a lot. It's to ask how much things cost. So cuánto cuesta, usually I ask what the, how much this is or cuánto costo. When you're out dining in a restaurant and you want to get the check, usually you just do this or you ask for la cuenta, por favor, which means that you want the check, please. <laughs> and then of course, gracias and de nada to say thank you and you're welcome. We usually use like perdón, disculpe, or lo siento to say sorry um, or to catch someone's attention. So we usually say like disculpe or perdona 
when we need to ask a question or we say lo siento if I accidentally bump into somebody or to apologize because my Spanish isn't that good. And because my Spanish isn't good, my ear isn't trained yet to hear it. Usually I tell somebody who's speaking to me to slow it down a little bit. So I tell them, mas despacio, por favor. So, mas despacio. Or I can also ask them, habla inglés, if they speak English, which makes it a little bit easier for us to communicate. When you enter a restaurant, usually like they will ask you if you're there to eat or to drink. So you can tell them if para comer, if you want to eat, or para beber, if you just want to drink. Or if you want to like pick on things, you can say para picar. Or if you want to have dinner, and it's para cenar. You need to know the different kinds of coffee that they serve here in Valencia. Cafe Solo is pretty much your espresso shot. Cafe Americano, and it's an espresso shot with additional hot water. Cafe Cortado, and it's pretty much your cappuccino and it has a splash of milk or foam. So it, it's an espresso shot with a splash of milk or foam. Café con leche is your typical latte. Café leche manchada is really interesting because it's coffee, but it's mostly milk and just a little bit of coffee. Café bonbon is coffee served with condensed milk and it has a ratio of one is to one. Café con hielo is coffee with ice. Descafeinado is decaffeinated coffee. Coffee. Café Carajillo is uh, a shot of espresso with added whiskey, brandy, or rum. Before I forget, it's really important to note that the sizes of the cups are really, really small compared to the ones in the U.S. This is the one I have. It's called the Café Americano, which is the espresso with the hot water. So you can't order sizes here. There are no sizes for the coffee. So you need to know how to order your beers too. The first beer, the first size of the beer is the six ounce, which is called caña. The second one is called doble, which is pretty much double of caña, which is 12 ounces. The third one is called a pinta or a tanque which is your 16 ounce beer. Sometimes it comes in a big glass, sometimes it comes in a mug. And the most important thing of all, jarra, which comes in a pitcher. Also, it's really important to note that there's usually only one beer on tap. If you're lucky, there's two. If you want more, especially if you want craft beers, that's, there's not a lot of those here on tap at least. And you need to tell them if you want it from the tap, which is called a barril, or if you want it in, from the bottle, it's called botella. I like drinking the water here from the faucet. People have different opinions, but Valencian water to me tastes great. So I would recommend trying out the local beers. To order a glass of wine, you can ask for una copa de vino tinto or vino blanco or tinto de verano, which is my favorite, or agua de Valencia. Valencia is the birthplace of the paella and they have uh, typical paella dishes that they serve here that you should know about. The first one is paella valenciana, which is their signature dish and that includes rice and it includes sometimes duck, chicken or rabbit, but it also has snails in it, which tastes super good. Paella mixta, which is a mix of meat and seafood. Paella mariscos, which is the seafood paella. Paella vegetariana, which is the vegetarian paella. Fidua, which is a noodle form of paella. Paella negra, which is a darker version of the paella, and it's all because of the squid ink that they put in the sauce. Arroz al horno, which means that it's an oven-baked paella, and it comes in a clay pot. Arroz caldoso which means that it's a soupy version of the paella. So the tip here is you make sure you understand which one is which and what you're getting because sometimes they don't have uh, English in their menu. So at least now you know. So tipping is not mandatory, neither is it expected here in Spain. But if you really want to leave something, sometimes you can just round it up. If, you're, if your bill is 11 euros and 20 cents, then you can just pay 12 euros, just leave the cash there. Or um, if they bring in the card reader and you want to pay by credit card, you can just tell them to put a different amount than that's on the bill. They type in the amount in the card reader before they scan your card. So it's really helpful to know that. Okay, you need to know the feeding schedules. Lunch here in Valencia is 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. 
merienda, which is like the afternoon snack, is about 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. And then actual dinner starts from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m., which is what we're doing right now. So pretty much eat late. When dining here in Spain, you should look for their menu del dia, which translates into menu of the day. And it's a typical menu that they serve here in Spanish restaurants. And it's uh, usually a very economical and a large meal. So what you get with the menu del dia is you get an appetizer, you get an entree, you get a dessert or coffee, and you get a free drink. Free drink also means that you can get beer as free drink and it's amazing well speaking of beer you could actually order beer at fast food restaurants here see check out this is the world famous mercat central or the grand central market and it's open from Monday to Saturday from 7.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. So that's the most important part you need to know is it closes at 3 because they need to do other things. And don't ask me about why it's world famous. You're gonna find out when you get here. The sun can be very unforgiving here in Valencia. So make sure you bring sunblock with you the whole time. And also, it's pretty normal to go topless here on the beach. So don't get shocked. You also need to know about these things called chiringuitos and they're uh, little, little shops in the middle of the beach by the shore and then you can drink and eat there. Well, you could also drink on the beach if you want, but just so you know, you can't drink with uh, glass bottles. It has to be canned. There's always something happening in the city of Valencia. What we found out is that it's easier to follow the blogs that list down all of the events that are happening. Or if you find yourself already in the city center, you can also go visit the tourist information center. It's a little bit hard to spot because it's literally within the Ayuntamiento building. It's that little blue eye right there. This used to be a river that they turned into a park and it's called the River Turia and it's one of the reasons why Valencia is one of the most walkable cities in the world. So it stretches seven kilometers and it starts from Cabecera Park from the west to the city of arts and sciences to the east. Okay, this park is open 24 hours it, and it has access points from everywhere. So if you want to explore the city, you, can sh you should start here because as soon as you walk this park, you're just going to see random things that you probably want to get off the park and then explore. So if you want to watch your summer blockbuster and you happen to be in Spain, you can still do that by selecting the VOSE. So that is called the voice over with Spanish um, subtitles. So VOSE starts for Vocales Original, Subtitulo en Español. So go ahead and select this one. Typically, you'll only see VOSE during nighttime. And if the movie happens to have some parts of it in Spanish, you won't find any English subtitles as well. On holidays and Sundays, businesses are closed. But then the restaurants and the bars are open. But then on Monday, the bars and the restaurants are closed. And then the businesses are open. Or sometimes they just open late or they close in between days. You know what? I don't know. Spain has an amazing trash system, okay? And there's a color for every kind of waste. So for yellow, you put all the plastic containers in there, metal cans, and coated packaging. For the blue container, you put all of the paper stuff. Carton, cardboard, magazines, Glass of every shape and size go into this one, the green one. I try to do that in the middle of the day because when you do that in early in the morning, it's going to wake people up. Nearly everything else goes into the gray bin. The brown bin is for organic waste, like coffee grounds, eggshells, and uh, pizza, pizza carton boxes with stains. But be sure that you read the label because this label says that these go into the yellow bin. 
Sometimes you'll find the orange containers like these for oil. And then just throw them in. When you're walking around Valencia, make sure to look up every once in a while to be able to enjoy the beauty of the architecture. But don't forget to look down every once in a while. Just so you don't step on dog poop. Oh, sh And finally, Valencia has this festival in March called Fayas. They set up fireworks for every single day at random times of the day for an entire month. And then at the end of the month, they burn this statue that they create. You should know that they don't only do that in March. There are gonna be random times where you will hear fireworks or see or hear really, really loud 15 minute firework displays. But it's really cool, but you should know that it's gonna happen. All right, thanks for watching and we hope you enjoy your stay here in Valencia. Hasta la próxima.